Hey everyone, it's Alex Fung here from Remax Hallmark, Daryl King team. And today we're gonna to be talking about the City of Toronto Real Estate Reports, May, 2022. That's great, let's get to it. All right, so one of the first things we need to look at is the number of transactions that happened from May, 2022 versus the year before that. So last month there was about 2,679 transactions versus the year before, which is 4118. So that's essentially 35% less transactions and less buyers. Okay. Now, one of the interesting parts though, that we should look at is the active listings. So how many homes are available in that time frame in May? So in May, there's about 5970 homes available versus around 5,200 homes versus the year before that. So that's essentially about 15% increase in more listings, more supply, okay? So there's a lot more homeowners that are looking to sell and cash out, okay? And if you compare last May versus this May, the home increase price was about 10%, 10.5%, okay? So I don't know any job that gave you a 10.5% increase in wages. Okay, it's still pretty good. Um, the days on market stayed relatively the same, but eight, um, an additional day extra to sell your home. Um, now, what this all means is that, you know, we are definitely moving into a buyer's market, a more balanced market actually, uh, because the real definition of a balanced market is six months worth of inventory. As you can see right here, that it's actually from 1.26 to 2.23. Okay, so we're definitely getting there. Okay, we're not there just yet. It's still a seller's market, okay? Um, now, if you're a home buyer and thinking about waiting, you need to take into consider of the rise in income of, you know, employers, okay? They're willing to pay their employees more money. Um, also, housing demand is driven by immigration, okay? There's, gonna, there's a record amount of immigrants coming to Canada, and that really affects, obviously, the housing markets. Um, now, you need to really think too, like, are you planning on buying the place to rent it out or is it for you to move in? Okay, about 20% of people are investors, the other 80 are more of consumers. So if you're really going to hold on and live in the property for 5, 10 years, then it doesn't really um, matter how much when you're going to buy the home okay everyone's trying to time the market but in reality it's an extremely difficult thing to do um if you even look at um this past ceo of cmhc which is the canadian mortgage housing corporation um before the pandemic he was expecting that the housing prices would drop to about 18 percent now if you didn't listen to him and you ended up buying you would have been up you know depending on the area 50 to 60 percent right so you really need to think about that. And now, if you're the homeowner looking to downsize or upsize, right? You need to think about your situation, right? If you're thinking about downsizing, you need to think about the value of your home, right? Yes, your neighbor that sold in February got more money than what you can right now. But if you bought the property 20 years ago, you're probably in up, you know, four, five, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars, right? So it might be a good idea for you to consider cashing out um, because with that downsizing and inflation, you can use that equity and turn it to cash and help you afford other day essentials or travel, okay? If you're thinking about upsizing, right? It doesn't matter. You should really consider about selling as well, right? Before you buy. Uh, because homes are taking longer to sell, you don't want to put yourself in a compromising position when it comes to uh, negotiations. Okay, so what I like to think of it is sell high and buy low, right? So right now is a peak time. Interest rates are still very low. Okay, a lot of media is exaggerating and creating fear in the market. Okay, but if you think about, you know, timing the markets, right, and comparing that interest rates to housing prices, you can see historically why the higher the interest rates, um, the lower the homing prices. So if you wanted to wait for a year or two years or even three years, you know, it's unlikely that we'll hit, we'll go back down to, you know, all time lows of interest rates. Okay. So 
you might be thinking though, as a homeowner, if I sell now, Alex, where do I live? Right? So there are a couple options. You know, the first one is you can live with your family and friends. The second one is you get another place, an Airbnb, or you rent a place for a year. The third option, which is my most favorite option, is you find a buyer that allows you to live in the property and rent it on a monthly basis. That way you don't need to move twice, which is, is um, causes a lot of pain and anxiety and a lot of work. And the second one really is that it gives you the flexibility when you make an offer, okay? When you do find a property that you like. And homeowners love flexibility, okay? So if you have any questions, uh, please let me know and I'll be happy to help. Take care, bye-bye.